yes, yes, yeah. You are tuned in to Offering Something. I am your host, Michael Bernier, always feeling so good. Yeah. You know, I love you, love you, love you for tuning into the show. If you're watching on YouTube, lean on that subscribe button for me. If you're the streaming television type, my beautiful friends, you know we're available everywhere out there. Apple, Amazon, Roku, all that on the Plymouth Rock TV channel. Oh, yeah, I got mad love for our sponsors at Riverwalk Brewing and at Enjoy Your Life brand and the Organic Natural Shop. Oh, boy, let me tell you, we have an exceptional episode in store for you today with the beautiful human who is a masterful musician, an acclaimed artist, an enchanting performer, a troubadour, a positive force of joy, a storyteller, a lord of the labels, a doctor <laughs> of gasp, yeah, and an honest to goodness friend who is, with dazzling detail, offering something. It is with great pleasure that I introduce to all of you Dan Blakesley. Yeah. How you doing, Michael? Good to see you always and forever each time. Oh, man, I'm wonderful. It's a pleasure to yes, have you here. Yes, man, absolutely. I always love being in your presence. Oh. Well, Dan, you we're make... Here, we're here. Yeah. It's great. How do you feel? You comfortable? Yeah. Safe? Yeah. yeah. How about you? Same. So good. Good. <laughs> You look fantastic. Have you looked at yourself today? No, I have you look not. look great. Thank you. You as well, man. <laughs> Always vibrant, though. This guy, I don't know if uh, uh, I'm sure uh, you've experienced this show before. He is always vibrant, not just on camera. <laughs> In real life. This is this guy every uh, day. But Dan, you're the one that makes so many people smile. We know this. <laughs> All right, so... Where and when did this unique and inspirational life path that you're on begin? Like, when did you know, I'm going to go my own way. I'm not going to go the traditional route to go at this life here. I'm going to go my own way and be a musician or an artist and carve my own lane. Was there yeah. some point where this decision was made? It was, I, I actually know, a pointed place okay. where it was made. A Let's location... And Makes the, the question seem even so better. So I was in high school mm -hmm. trying to figure out where I want to go to college, and I love. Where is this high school that you're in? Marshwood High School, Elliott, Maine. All right, hawk. Elliott, Maine. You're a hawk. Look at you. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Quite the move. And, and uh, so I was trying yeah. to decide whether to go into <laughs> art school, music school, mm -hmm. cooking school. I loved them all. Yeah, I loved all like I love a lot of things, and and uh, and I was walking around Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and I see this piece of artwork in the window, and I just kept looking at it. I'm like, man, look at that piece. Look at it. That it's so masterful. It's made by a guy wow. named Don Gorvet, who's a tremendous artist. Um, and I saw this piece, and I'm like, I'm going to art school. I need to do. I'm so. Pa I've always been passionate about art yes. and music, cooking a little less than others. I like to cook, yeah. but I felt like I really felt like it had to be art or music, and I was kind of yeah. it was a coin toss, you know. And I ended up uh, uh, going to art school, and through my four years of art school, they made you work like ten hours a day drawing and all that stuff, and it was like. I love to draw, but I'm like, okay, this is a little excessive <laughs> even for me. But, you know, yeah. I did it. I got through school. But wait, but so the point where you made this decision, you're in high school in Elliott, Maine. I was Elliot in high Maine. school, Elliott, Maine. You're in the hallways in the Hawks. Right. The home of the right. Hawks. <laughs> but yeah, so, so, I, so, I went to, so I went to art school, and then throughout art school, there was like so much of a workload. I started playing music, but playing guitar because I used to play piano. Okay. Like this is like in from like sixth grade through high school. I was like, oh, I love writing songs. I play piano. I want to maybe do music stuff, you know, okay. but it wasn't until art school that my second year that I was like, man, I need a break from this stuff. I'm going to I'm going to 
take this guitar that's been sitting in the corner of my room. My parents got me when I was 18. I'm going to have to learn how to play it. And there it was. And there it was. So fast forward a little bit, and you're in a position where now you've graduated from college. Yes. With a degree in fine arts. General fine arts. General fine arts. General fine arts Hello, General. is different than like – Drawing, sculpting, photography, like uh, 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 sort of like I wanted to do everything. So I was able it's to like. the uh, jack of all arts. Right. Exactly. Hey. Exactly. So I, like I could take photographs of my work. I can construct things, you know, with saws and whatever. But so I took general Mixed fine arts. Mixed media. Mixed media. Yeah. Yep. So now we graduate flying colors because you got that hawk spirit in you <laughs> still. That's right. Right. There he goes. <laughs> <laughs> and hello, world. What are you doing to produce money at this point? Working in a lobster restaurant. Working in a lobster restaurant. Barnacle Billy's a gunk went Maine. Wow. It is exceptional. I mean, I was pointing at that. Exceptional. <laughs> so good. And you know what? I know. It was actually, I, I haven't told you yet, I don't think. Tell me. So I was working at that lobster restaurant. Through high school and, and part of college, and actually to the end of college. So, so like seven years I was there. In a row. And, and it was the eighth year my boss noticed when I graduated college. I was like playing, all busking on the corner, like uh, in, in a Gunquit, Maine, and Portland, yeah. Maine, and, and Boston, and uh, Newburyport. And I came out with a, with a, uh, a recording. At that, at that moment that I recorded right at the end of school, and I came back from my eighth year to work at Barnacle Billy's Lobster Restaurant, yep. and Barnacle my boss Billy's. said, no. You, my son. And I was like, hey, hey, wait, now, wait, 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 wait a second. Because what, what, honestly, <laughs> I'll be honest, I was one of the best uh, bus boys they've ever had. I can only imagine this would be the case. <laughs> so, so anyway high spirited hard working said, he said to me he said you're supposed to be playing music he said you what was his name he was he I know. billy was he actual barnacle billy no it was barnacle billy's son named court. court and he said to me he goes i can't hire you back you're supposed to be doing music i'm like it's giving me chills right now thinking of it because wow. like does Court, know, point does Court my, know of... He knows. I told him. I said, man, you're the reason I'm... I'm like, one of the reasons the I'm reason doing this. But it was really cool. Then he said to me, he goes, all right, here's the deal. You try to book as many shows as you can throughout the entire summer. And whatever days you're not booked, you can work here. Oh. So it was super nice. What and, a deal. And he Captain gave me a loan Court. to get, like, uh, my first like real guitar that was like a good quality like professional guitar he gave you the loan and he gave me his wisdom tooth <laughs> yeah dude this guy is unbelievable <laughs> he is unbelievable Court Tower, if you're watching this i love you wow. he knows that's a that's a tremendous story so um you go out in the world you're playing your your guitar at some point um you develop some kind of validation or credibility in your craft, and you you have to have a realization of okay, people don't like this, so I should be doing something else. Right, right, right. right? Or people do like this. This is a realistic option. Right. Was there any particular performance that you had where you sat back and thought to yourself, "Am I one of those guys?" I can. I'm, I think I can do this. Who I am. Right. I mean, I don't know if it was at a specific time, but it was. It was pretty much at that moment that he wouldn't let me come back to work because he's like, "You're supposed to be out there playing music." That's unbelievable. Court like, gets it all. Oh my god. Hmm. <laughs> right. I love this. Um, let's bounce around a little bit here. So let's talk about. Um, <clears throat> the music industry. Yeah, this is something you've been a part of. Yeah, uh, for how long now? Twenty-eight years. Twenty-eight years. Yep. 
And that's been consistent 28 years. Nonstop, yeah. Dan Blakesley performing. Nonstop. Non Do you love the music industry? Do you have no opinion about it? Do you exist in your own little world? I think it's my own little thing. You know what I mean? It's like I've never thought to myself, oh, shoot, I should be doing this kind of music because this is what sells. Okay. I just do, I write songs about my true life experiences. And if people can get something out of that, that is that is the validation that I need to continue. You know what you know what I yep. mean? It's like I I've I've done that that you know uh, throughout my whole career really, and it's Excuse like me. yeah you have it, it makes it so like some people are like oh maybe you should add some like harmonies or or do this thing or do that thing. I'm like nah, I mean man. maybe maybe at some <laughs> point if I want to do it. Yeah, yeah. I said but I'm not you know I've always been an independent person and uh and i sort of yeah it's like i mean life is a roller coaster and it's like i've been you know like so high so low like like two extremes of both yeah. multiple times in my life and i write about both things i write about when i'm on the big cloud i'm right when i'm my face down in the dirt <laughs> you know it's like we all have the thing is people can relate to that because no, i don't care how rich you are how well off you are how easy things are in your life there's there's a little roller coaster happening oh yeah in everyone's life a little bit especially you know what I mean? in the this world of independent this the the, yes. sec, the security in the sense that well it's been working but there's no true security tomorrow right. could be abundant or there could be a famine right 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 yeah. right you just it's always worked so yep hopefully it keeps on working Heck yeah. <laughs> health. I mean, that's like that's like the number one thing. Just health. To be, you say health. Well, health. Okay. Yeah. So do, you, health, do you take care also, of yourself? Also, a positive mind. Like, like Michael and I were discussing earlier. I'm going to talk into the camera. Michael and I were discussing earlier oh, about how when I was a subway musician in Boston, I, <laughs> I played in the subway of Boston for almost yeah. 20 years. Yep. And there was this guy that I became friends with down there. He's like 65, and we would share spots. Like he he'd give me a call if Harvard Square was open. He goes, man, before anyone else hounds me to, for the spot, I'm gonna give you a call. Let you know I'm gonna be done in an hour if you want to grab Ooh. it. I'm like, what a great guy, and I'd yeah. do the same for him. And so he was telling me about how, how like this is what he does every day. Plays music. I play music every day too. Every like I would go on the subway, play five to eight hours every day. Because wow. it fulfills my soul and it feeds me. Yeah. You know, it keeps me going. And so this guy every day, eight hours said in to the me, subway. I know. Dan Blake's. So this guy said to me, seen he a lot. said, seen a lot. Uh, my younger brother, who's like 57, 58, is walking around all achy and like just <laughs> like really like just really like in a Shit. bad mood all the time. And here is his brother who's 65 saying, I feel great. <laughs> he said, "I feel." He goes, "It's the music that keeps me young, doing yeah. what I love to do through life that keeps me young." And it's like, so I'm, I'm, I'm so lucky that my parents, when I was a little kid, they said, "You do whatever you want to do that makes you the most happy. We're going to be behind you a million percent, and they have been and still are." So, so thankful. Directly to put it directly, what you're saying is that a large part of the reason why you remain so healthy and youthful yeah. is because of the music. Absolutely. <laughs> Without question. No question in my mind. Wow. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Yeah. But do yep. you take care of yourself otherwise? Doing push-ups and sit-ups and oh, yeah. Dan's doing jumping jacks. Carol's easy. <laughs> Whoa. No. Uh, you know, I should. thing is, should I'm, you though? like... <laughs> What do you mean? <laughs> Should you though? No, I mean I do things like, like I run around a lot. The the thing is, when like it's when it's high touring time, I'm yeah. I'm lifting like the PA like you know four times a day, yep. like doing all that stuff, doing the run around, putting up posters. I'm yeah. a poster hound. So when <laughs> yeah. when it's like. When it's high time for playing gigs, it's like I feel like oh I don't have to do the sit ups in the. Stairmaster or whatever. You know, this time of year maybe a little bit because I like Christmas cookies. Christmas a little cookies. too much. Look at you. Let's talk about a highlight gig, a highlight performance in your life. Something that you played that for you 
really meant something. Like resonated. It was like this is this is unbelievable. All right. I love this experience. It might not be what you think. Uh, hey man. All right, you ready? I'm ready. All right. Are you guys ready? You can give me the glamorous one after. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I it was early on in my career. I got asked to play at uh, Fall Fest at University of New Hampshire in Durham, New Hampshire. And I was so excited. I was playing like right to like in front of Thompson Hall. Sure, uh, yeah. They were doing like an outdoor thing and tents and everything in the fall. Look and uh, this gigantic storm came in and they closed the entire thing down. I was like, damn. What kind of storm I'm, are we talking I'm, about? Like, Rain, huge wind? hurricane, like insane. Okay. And Shut everyone down went worthy. home. They broke down all the tents, but the one tent they didn't break down was where they had the music because the PA was still set up. Uh-huh. And I'm like, you know what? I don't care. I'm go- I'm, I was asked to play this event. I'm going to play it anyway. No one, even if no one's there. So I set up. I was in the room by myself. No lights on. The only light that lit up that little tent was from the power strip. So it's like I could barely. But they had the PA on. And I'm like, man, I'm going to play in the rain. It's pouring rain. Totally pouring rain. I'm sitting there by myself <laughs> thinking this is awesome i love playing music so much all of a sudden eight or ten people came through the rain with umbrellas and came sat down all i could see was their silhouettes i didn't even know who it was and they sat down in silence listening to every speck for an hour they all left i didn't know who it was and and it was just like the most amazing experience that is beautiful like pin drop Eight people, and I'm like, perfect. If it, if it was a pin drop, thousand people, I'd be. Was there just some applause? Excited. No applause. Oh, there was. Yeah, there was applause. Okay. Yep. So you knew they were into it. Wow. Right. But it was like incredible, man. Dan. Like the like just the energy. Wow. I don't know. It's like, I play like like you two. You play a mix of venues oh, yeah. here, you know. And it's like you know you get the ones where it's like say you're playing 10, a thousand. Right, right, right. <laughs> say hey, you're playing like hey, a festival. Yeah. You know that. Out of the thousand people, there's like 200 that are locked in. Yeah. The other ones are doing whatever. Sure. They're do, they're experiencing the the festival the life. Yeah. yeah, and then and then hey. you know, but then sometimes you play places where it's like a house concert to like 50 people and they're oh, locked it's in. So incredible, and it's yeah. like amazing. But I love all of them. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like yeah, I've had, I've been, I've probably played about. 2000 gigs in my career but and yes i've had some bad ones <laughs> <laughs> haven't we all but hey. but i gotta say like each one it's a learning experience it still felt good though <laughs> sure yeah so i understand you have a very specific social media strategy this is true <laughs> <laughs> you see my face sink i'm yeah. like what do you do what's the strategy i'm not sure what something you like you have about? a certain number of posts that you feel you need to put up each day yes and that's an actual pressure that exists in it is a pressure in exists. the world and, I, and it drives me crazy that's why i wish like if i had a manager or someone helped me out you do it you so know what's that what's that sweet spot number that you're trying to hit every day uh, how many posts you i mean i i would say if it's if it's high tour say i'm on tour yeah then it's like you got to be promoting the the next week's shows the week that you're having shows at other venues Mm -hmm. right so basically i'm i'm doing like five posts a day for different things different different shows and then so usually say i play all right say i play april 1st right at in boston or something there you are yeah (laughs) so So like on march 1st Mm -hmm. or i mean as soon as the the gig is booked like i make an announcement saying hey i put on the website and like get your tickets now right and then a month before i announce it again and then two weeks before I, i i start doing posts like every like three or four days and then the week before it's every day yeah. Until until the the show. Yeah. Okay. So there's yeah. a lot going on there, Dan. Yeah, there's a little too much going on. And you're trying to drive. You're trying to play shows. You're yeah. trying to eat. You're trying to do your push-ups and sit-ups. <laughs> All the things. It's a hectic life out there. Um. So we haven't even done this here. Your music. Describe yeah. to me your music, the genre. 
I've never heard Dan Blakesley. Dan, describe my own Dan thing. Dan Blakesley, what does your music sound like, you beautiful human? Man. It's hard to describe. I mean, I'm sure every and don't musician say it's say, hard to describe. But it's not. I mean, but I'm going to say, <laughs> I'm going to tell you what it is. So, all right. I'm going to tell is. you a little of my back, background first. Sure, Daniel. Is that so, okay? Yeah. Okay. So, I grew up on a farm in Maine. <laughs> when I was in sixth grade, grade my number brother six. introduced me to hip hop. So, I was a little break dancer. Oh, really? Can't you you tell? and Dave Russo, yeah. Yeah. So, so I was like, suit, had the parachute pants, like the, everything. I bought my own Puma Skids, jumpsuit when yeah. I was like in sixth grade. Yeah. Z Cabaricis, yeah. So, anyway. <laughs> yes. Chams. <laughs> anyway, so so I, I was into that thing, and then and all the while my dad is a jazz musician, so I was wow. hearing jazz all the time, like yep. him rehearsing, him coming back from gigs. I was always I always loved jazz since I was a little kid, and and so I had those the couple things going there. Yep. And then my my jazz uh, and hip hop. My older brother introduced me to punk rock. What was his name? In seventh your older grade, brother? Jonathan. Jonathan. Yep. Introduces you to punk rock. Punk rock. Seventh grade. It brought me wow. to a Knights of Columbus Hall, and I was floored beyond floored. I was like, in the best way. In the best way. I was like, I ripped off my like you did Puma what jumpsuit. Now? All of a sudden, all the shirts <laughs> no. are black. Doc Martens are on. Right. I got my goth makeup on. Yeah. No. I never. I mean, and then so I was super into punk rock. And I'm still into both. I'm still into hip hop. I'm into jazz. I'm into punk rock. I'm into everything. And then my dad starts playing drums in a country band. Ooh. So then I started getting into country. So it's like my chemical musical makeup, that's what it starts yeah. from. And the songs that I write, like I said earlier, I write. You mean tr tra traditional country, Johnny Cash? Yeah, old, yeah, type. yeah. Okay. Yeah, old country, yeah. Not, not plastic country. No, no. So, so all through growing up, I was listening to all kinds of music. Yeah. And, uh, and so, so when I started writing my own songs, you know, I write like I play them on an acoustic guitar, so people immediately, th immediately think folk. But yeah, but that can be folk, blues, country. That can be like, you know, rock and reggae. Roll, that can be like whatever. Yeah. And so I found that like, Early on in my music career, my stuff was for the folk clubs, it was too loud. And for the rock clubs, it wasn't loud enough. So I was in this weird state of like, you know, but eventually I started like just doing me. I'm like, I'm not yeah. going to change what I do because, you know, you know, maybe I'm not accepting this venue because I'm not country enough or I'm not rock and roll enough or folk enough. I just do what I do. And so my songs that I write are a mix of like old country, blues, folk, rock, and Halloween. You know what you are That's enough something. of? What? You're Dan Blakesley enough. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, true. Nice. Beautiful thing. Cool. Yeah. Thank you, my friend. Um. So you, you guess you've played about 2,000 shows in your yep. career. Yep. I had to add them up at one point Okay, now that for a they, manager. They've been added up for this manager that <laughs> right. once was that, or perhaps still is. That's not with me anymore, but okay. still a friend. Um, as a musician, there's the I love music and I love performance part, and right. then there's the I drive in a car part, and I stop in the rest area, and um, maybe on a great night I'll stay in a hotel. On um, a really great night. Yeah, then there's the new situations, there's meeting new people, there's all types of other things that come with being a musician. Those weigh heavy on a lot of people. A lot of people stop being a musician because they're like, I can't take the road life part of it. I love playing music, but right. that stuff is just the whole other thing. You have to become a certain breed of human. So do you enjoy that part of the adventure? I love it. I love meeting new people. And, and I love having like new experiences. I mean, yes, I fell off a cliff in California <laughs> for my first time seeing the Pacific Ocean because I wanted to touch it. And that's my own fault. And that's just, so I wrote a song about it. You know what I mean? And it's like, 
and that wouldn't have happened. What do you mean you I fell off the cliff, Dan? Were you okay? <laughs> I'm okay. Yeah. It was, man, it was rough. I was, was I, it I'm going to show should it, Yeah. Should I tell you a little more? Yeah. A little bit. I'll elaborate a little bit. Please do. So I'm on my first ever cross country tour. Here I'd you go. been to like Texas many times and like um, uh, the middle of the US, top and bottom, but I'd never been past Texas. Okay. And I remember the second I went, the furthest I've ever been, I took a picture of the wide open terrain. Like, oh my God, I feel like. I feel like I'm in the Hobbit saying I've never left the Shire. You know what I mean? So I'm like, I'm going in. I've never seen that. I don't know the reference, but I understand. And and I and I get to California for the first time. I'd never seen a redwood tree in my life. I'd never seen a cactus, like big, you know, cactus. And I was losing my mind. It was so cool because I'd only seen it in National Geographic, you know, an online or whatever. (laughs) So I'm there among the redwood trees, just like my mind is splitting. I don't do I don't drink, smoke, or do drugs. And I was so hot yeah. for like months after like people will be having re- regular conversations with me when I get back and I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm I'm in this I'm in this place right now. <laughs> like it was like the weirdest thing. Anyway, so I'm in yes. California and I'm like That's so beautiful. Hey, would it be the best way to tour California? Ride on the coast the entire time. So I rode 24 hours along the coast into each gate. I made sure to only book shows that were th- two or three hours apart. So I have plenty of time yeah. to like drive on the route one a or yeah. whatever. So I'm driving and I'm like, my God, that Pacific ocean is just so cool. I'm just going to pull over at big Sur and just take a real good gander. And just, I have, I have an extra like three hours today. I'm just going to sit there. So I'm sitting there on this cliff and I'm like, I want to touch this ocean. I've never touched the ocean before. I'm seeing it for the first time right. ever. So I start walking down this trail. Ooh. Good thing it's not radio. You saw my fingers go trail yeah. with the quotes, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm going down the trail, and the trail ends at like 200 feet before the bottom. I'm like, man, I, I still see like clumps of grass and stuff I could hold on to. So I, I went down another 100 feet, and then I was like, man, there's nothing else. This is, like, this dicey. is like pretty straight yeah. down. And I'm like, but I went so far. And I, st- I put my foot down now. and I slipped. And luckily, if I had tumbled, I would not be doing the radio interview with you today because I wouldn't be here. You would not be but here But I slid today. down on my back. So hitting rocks and like oh. whatever, whatever stuff on the way down. I get down to the bottom and I'd shredded my shirt. And it was my, belt, my back was bloody and I had blood on my arms and stuff like that. I get to the bottom. I'm just taking a moment. For like an hour and a half, like, okay, you're live. Yeah. I made it. I made it. I did it. I'm here. And then I was like, okay, Seth. how do I get back up? <laughs> That's the problem. So I started walking along the coast north to try and find a better place because I had knocked all the stuff down. Yeah. So I tried to find a better place. Couldn't find one. The cliffs started doing, you know, more, more like, yeah. You know, just impossible. Look at this. So I had to climb back through the exact spot that I fell. So I was grabbing onto whatever gravel, and it's and it's letting go of my hand as I'm crawling up. It took almost an hour to get to the top. All my might in my body. I felt like I was someone was filming me because it was like <laughs> this is life and death. This is yeah. not effing around anymore, man. You've got to get to the top. Wow, with so the bloody every, back. And it, so I got to the, the top. shirt. Beyond pooped. I get to the top and there's this couple there with their kids at the Vista spot with binoculars <laughs> looking out. And I'm like, whatever you do, don't go over the side. And before I could even finish what I'm saying, they're like in their car and there's dust. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember like, after oh my that, God, get the I went to this go. taco place in Big Sur and I just sat there. Silent, breathing alive looking at this plate of tacos in the sunshine saying <laughs> i'm here i i did it and everyone's having all these tacos. conversations <laughs> they don't know i almost lost my life at that moment <laughs> yeah so anyway wow so i wrote a song about it uh what's Where, the name of that song it's called uh dang it <laughs> that's the name of the song all right dang it's it. not dang me by roger miller it's dang it Dang it. No, it's not dang it. Not I can't remember it. the name right now. 
Okay. Um, but there, it's gonna it's coming on the new album. Are there particular musicians that you would say are your your favorites, Dan? Oh yeah, many. Who who, who are those? Um, I mean, uh, legendary. I've, I've like in your the mind. Me- yeah, I've like the legend. Yeah, uh, S- Stevie Wonder. I'm a okay. huge Stevie Wonder fan. Johnny Cash, Bob Dylan, Neil Young, Michael Hurley. Um, there's, I mean, there's so many, but I mean, like a lot of my biggest, biggest inspiration comes from friends. friends. Like there's so many albums that I have in my collection that I'm like, oh my God, this album beginning to end is so beyond powerful. Give me an example of one. Throw one out there. All right. The first one that comes to um, mind. Don't think too hard. Like somebody's going to get upset with you because you no, said this. No, 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 no. What do you got? I'm just trying to remember the name of the, of the album. Well, the, Who's the I can't artist? remember the name of the album. Low Cards. Low Cards. The Low Cards. Okay. And it's their first album. And my God, that's one that I've Shh. I've bought for so many people. I just give it to them. It's like, it's not your birthday or anything. You just need this album. You need this album. Mm-hmm. The Low Cards. Yes. Provenance. Um, you've put out, let me guess this here, 12 albums in total? Thank you for saying that. It's really actually 10. It's 10. Well, I mean, it's at, I mean, it's 12 if you count the live albums. That's what I'm So doing. you're right. Yeah, okay. All right, you're right, man. I'm actually right. I thought I was so well-researched, Dan. Good job. And I actually am. <laughs> you are? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, all recorded in the same place. You have a favorite studio you're going no, to. I mean, is there the a process is, with your recording? I re- like, to be honest, like... I like honesty, and I think everyone single- does. Sit here and lie to me would not be what we are seeking <laughs> today. Right. From you. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll tell you that yes. off screen, all right? I'll tell you the lies <laughs> off screen. Not a lie. Kidding. Um, every single recording I experience I've had has yep. been a good one in a totally different one than the next. Like, completely. Like, I remember my first recording I made in a basement in Baltimore when I was going to art school. Ultimately. Blew my mind. I'd never even thought about, oh, you need to put these songs now in a sequence. I'm like, what are you talking about? I was just going to put them out the way they were recorded. Yeah, whatever way you're <laughs> like, it to I don't me. know. <laughs> this is my first time at the Rodeo. No, no, no. No, I know now. But then, <laughs> so there was that. And then there was like my first ever recording with a full, full band, full yeah. like arrangements. And like yeah. all these friends came to the studio in Portsmouth, New Hampshire at Fish Tracks. And it was like the most amazing time. Recorded with friends of mine and just what did like we call that band on that album, Dan Blakesley and that wasn't. You know what? I didn't have a. Uh, I, I played with the band Glue Stick at that time. Uh, Glue uh, Stick. Dr- yeah, drums and bass were uh, provided by the band, band Glue Stick. Stick. I didn't have a band at that moment. Okay, all right. But then I had the Dan Blakesley three after. Alrighty. Yep. Yep. Mike Van Jack Narcotta. They yep. make you smile. They do make me they smile. Do, it? Yes. And it's a good smile. Yes. Uh-huh. And the and the guys I have now, Calabash Club. Oh, we've golly. been together for yeah. the for the longest time. Uh Nick Feneff, Jim Rudolph, Mike Effenberger, and I'm so honored each time we're just in the room hanging out together. No, even if we're not playing music, I just like their their vibe, their energy is so good. But when we do play music, nice. I am on a I'm on another cloud yeah. plane of existence. But when it when it comes back to the the recordings, it's like I recorded like in a barn yep. in in North Berwick, Maine. We put mics in the rafters. A friend of mine, a studio engineer friend of mine, came down from Portland, and he was like all about it. He put he was the one that climbed up, put mics in the rafters, mic'd everyone, and people hanging out in lawn chairs as we were playing. You hear someone cracking a beer. Yeah, that's actually my friend Dean who owned the barn. He was like mm-hmm. cracking a beer. We're like. What are you doing? Like, I'm going to be a and part that was of this the album forever. We were like, hey, man, that's perfect. We're glad you were there. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I definitely was. Yep. I understand you have an alter ego, right? <laughs> <laughs> or a character. I do. There's actually more than one, but. <laughs> so this has been going on for years. What's, what's the name of this other thing that you become dan dr gasp dr gasp yep there you have it people i am dr gasp if you didn't know if you're like who the hell is this dr gasp guy i've been seeing all over 
Jimmy Fallon and whatnot. Yeah, he's I here. It's me and Kimmel, <laughs> Doctor Gas. <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of funny, like the. It's, so, it's funny. So I <laughs> thank you. It's something. So I've been doing this all Halloween theme music show for the past eighteen years, and I came upon it by mistake. Like I had always been super into Halloween since I was a kid. Same yeah. my parents. My parents were super into it. My brothers. And You're so, kind of super into everything, Dan, I think. <laughs> you are too. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. so here I am like, it's like 18 years <laughs> ago. Actually, it's uh, 19 years ago. And I'm, I'm getting ready to, to uh, play uh, uh, a show in Portsmouth at the press room. And it's a couple days before, and someone asked me, me to be part of their haunted house. Yep. And as a friend, like before I had any Dr. Gasp, whatever, but they just knew that hey I man, liked I'm spooky stuff. I'm having a haunted stuff. house. Right. You come I'm scare having some a haunted people? house. There's going to be some kids and people and like whatever. Just go in the basement. We'll give you this corner. Everyone gets their own corner. They're friends. And they said, dress up however you want and like decorate the room, like whatever. Just be spooky. So I dressed up as a. Not all that spooky what I dressed up as. But I dressed up as a ghost <laughs> cowboy, co cobwebs all over me, shiny boots, skull mask, and on a rocking chair with cobwebs all over me playing disjointed cowboy songs, like really ugly, as yeah. ugly and gritty as possible. For doing that for four hours, I'm like, I started writing a song. I'm like, man, this is, this is a Halloween song. <laughs> and I think I'm going to perform it at the press room in Portsmouth. Two days from now. So I decided, hey, I'm going to do this thing. I've always loved Monster Mash like crazy. Every single time I hear it on the radio, yeah. it doesn't matter what time of year, I love it. I don't care if I hear it 30 times in October <laughs> or 3,000. I love it. In Thank you, Monster Bobby Boris Pickett. So, so here I am playing my regular non-Halloween show two days before Halloween, and I break out this... Hey, everyone, I have this kind of Halloween song I wrote. I'm going to play it. I got done playing it, did you, did you, and I immediately apologized to the audience. I'm like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I will never play this song ever again. And then someone shouted out the back of the room, I want to put that out on vinyl the next year. So it came out on vinyl the next year. And then I ended up writing more songs so i was like man this is fun this gets this weirdo art art punk yeah bizarre human out of me that doesn't quite come out in my regular music so then i started no it's very different doing this thing every year every october for you know like from <laughs> october 1st to november 1st i'm playing gigs almost every day dressing up in costume decorating the can i say shit yeah Good. <laughs> I guess. It's happening. <laughs> Decorating the shit on the stage. Yeah. Yes. Good gasp. Yep. It's, Man, it's, it's a wild like, time. Like, you know what? As, and sometimes... as unique and as wild as Dr. Gasp is, the fact that it's you is very... I'm like, yeah, of course. Yeah, Dan. Yeah. He's got that. I've been known to do... Winter Halloween, Summer Halloween, and Spring Halloween shows. Wow. Not just really reaching. Halloween. Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. All the others. Not just that. Um, why do you think, now stepping away from Dr. Gas. Oh, yeah, I'm ready. In that whole scene there, back to the traditional Dan Blakesley <laughs> that everybody can't get enough of music and live performance. What is it? The people love about you because people really love you. <laughs> people that you're very kind. The people that are into you are like they love you. They. I so feel, I feel why? very do you, blessed. How, why do you think that is? People, I mean, you have I, to have I feel blessed that, that when here. when someone gives like a list to a song, and they resonate with it, or even if they just give a list to a song or check out my art or whatever, and it's like, I feel so fortunate that uh, through the years I've been able to survive as an artist musician based on the fact that I'm supported by a lot of people. 
you know, I may not have, I'm, I'm not dry, driving a Lamborghini or anything. My question, I'm interjecting here because why are they choosing to support you? Why do they like you? What do you think the reason is? Because there's so many people out there playing their guitar, doing these things, but they're choosing to come see you. Why? Why do you think? I point a lot. That's people what it is. It's your pointing, pointing skills. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's so funny. I thought you were pointing at me because you're a little sign down there. Because I noticed <laughs> I said the L word a couple times, and you were like, every time I did it, you're like, oh. And you said it. Wait, what? The word like. Like. Oh, it says that? Yeah. <laughs> it says it right down there. <laughs> oh, I love these signs. Talk to the audience. Hello. Oh, my. Am I? I was. It's everywhere, man. Hi. <laughs> um, you comfortable with the gift, Dan? Can I give you a gift? Is that all right? Sure. Yeah, I'm going to do that. That's super nice. Yeah. I didn't expect that. I didn't. Well, I don't have any. It's really anything. nice to go through, uh, through life without expectations. That's a great this is... and the most positive, <laughs> truthful, and pointer. healthy way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Gifting time. Hold on. What is this? Just, oh. Am I supposed to open do it that here? Thing that people do every, oh, wait, yeah, wait, open is it, it now. It's more, is it one of those videos where it's like unboxing? Uh, and someone's unboxing, boxing like uh, whatever. Just, yeah, open it up. Take the stuff out. We yeah, that's it. a good sticker. Yeah, you can pull it. There it is. You see I'm gonna how ask I you about these up? stickers yeah. after. Yeah. The vinyl. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's we kind of funny yeah. because I've never made a sticker in my life. Wow, sticker free Dan. Not not anymore. Mm. Not after we have our little oh, talk no. after. There it is. Hey! Enjoy your Enjoy life. your life baseball like, hey, hat. Yes. I'm already doing this, man. Don't need no reminders. Yeah, I knew it would match the shirt you were wearing. So Thank you. I really you know. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, digging in. What do we have? It just uh, my you know, because I know you just like music. These are things people mail. Music to the studio all the Heck time, yes. and it just goes to me, and it, it's hard to listen to all of it. And I like to give it to people that right. will give. Man, you know I'm gonna listen to each every one yeah. of these. Yeah, I'm, the, I'm that guy. Yeah, I've been. I've I've done. Whenever I go on tour, it's like come back with like a hundred yeah. CDs yeah. from people I met time. along the way. We do exchanges and. This is exciting. Give him the time. It's exciting. You're so nice, Dan. Man, look at all this stuff You're in so here. You're so nice. <laughs> I feel, are y'all jealous? I, I, I feel bad. I there mean, maybe I could. What? Like $10 to the organic natural shop, Rowley Mass. Heck the best yeah. people over there. And all the most wonderful products. Clean. That is great. Get in on and that's where there's all these uh, little natural things in that bag from those beautiful people there. Oh, that's great, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. are you kidding me? Man, I am so you know what's funny? All right. What is it, Kringle? Check it out. Look right. at you. So as it turns out, <laughs> I'm turns Irish out. and Portuguese. And candy canes. Whenever I eat a candy cane, the top of my head sweats. Uh, do you want to do a thing where I'm gonna I'm gonna eat this and then you come and check it out? Real? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'll do anything. All right. My head's dry now. Now you get a check. You get a check. All right, show me the dry head. It's yeah. it's dry. It's yeah. quite it's actually quite dry. Why don't you just wait. Quite dry. Wait until this candy cane. What are you okay. Mm -hmm. Show goes on. Yeah. Oh my god. What's this? My god, what? Hey oh, nice shirt. What is That's this? from Enjoy Your Life on the sleeve there. That looks like yes. it will fit you so nicely. It will fit oh, me so yeah. nicely, and I thank Vibrant, you very much. Yellow, comfortable. Yes. <laughs> it's all about comfort, yeah. this life. Might as well be comfortable. That's why I wear cowboy boots. Uh, yeah. And that's why you... Hey, uh, right? <laughs> style, you but, know, but can make you, know you feel what? comfortable. People there's, don't there's know they're very comfortable. Several levels to this. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, could be a shaker. Yeah, that's a gift from uh, John Travolta. Oh, man. That's really nice. He tunes in, right? Oh, yeah. That's good. Who else? Pee Wee Herman? What do you say? <laughs> I don't I know. Love that guy. I wish. Man. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> 
I love people. There you go. Enjoy your life. Key chain. Oh my god. All these things. That's it. We love you. People love you. Thank they wanted you. to make sure you had all that stuff. <laughs> they did. Hey, so wait. Dan needs all this. Did you know? Yes, there's a lucky penny in there. Lucky penny and in I'll there. And I'll even tell you this much, Dan. The year on that penny, 2004. Go ahead. Check it out. Amazing. How do you feel about that? I feel great. I meant to tell you. There's I'm going to put it in my in lucky there. pocket. And on the front side, upper right part of the head there, a little burn on it. No, on that penny. On that penny. Yes. I'm aware of I that I didn't penny. notice. I don't think the penny is just all <laughs> in there haphazardly. That was a pl perfectly placed penny that this I almost forgot great. about. Yeah, I know. That, yeah. Thank yeah, you. There you go. That's it. A mu yeah, this is fantastic. This is going to keep me healthy. All natural. And clean warm. Clean and lovely stuff. Some, some stickers. You know, Dan. All the things uh -huh. you need. Um... One question before we get into discussing the art side of your entire world. Mm. Um, <laughs> do you wake up to an alarm clock? Some days. I mean, in general. So as a musician, I have to be kind of a night owl. Yes. And I like to be a night owl. Because the thing is, you get done playing the gig at Boston so nice. at, at midnight. And I have to drive home an hour and a half. I have to pack up my equipment, so I have to at least stay up till three yeah, every day. Yeah, which wonderful That's the animal instinct. I love it. And so it's your time. Yeah. So I sort of like, even though I stay up till three, I don't want to wake up at eleven. I don't want to miss the day. Yeah. So sometimes I wake up at nine thirty or ten, just so I can like enjoy life yeah enjoy like i this friend once balance. oh my god check this out let's hear about it let's check this out so when i was working <laughs> at the lobster restaurant my friend barnacle Frenchy, billy my yeah. friend frenchy frenchy and court surfer All he's right. a manager there with court hmm? and he's like all summer long i'm gonna see what how little names. sleep i can get so i can take in the entire summer more summer than i've ever taken in my entire life and that he, was the plan he said yes Frenchie says this? Yes. So he got four hours of sleep. Frenchie, Frenchie's four maximizing hours of sleep, summer. Maximizing summer. Four hours of sleep every day through the summer. Just because he wanted it's to like be an able extra to. extra day than everyone else <laughs> every two days. <laughs> Is that Frenchie. insane? I could tell I was catching up with him. I could see he was looking ragged. A handsome he guy, like handsome guy. Yeah, but but I can what, tell. He, then he can he sleep was... for like one day and he's caught up. It's not like, <laughs> not like he needs to sleep for 20 days in a row to catch mm -hmm. up. Frenchie is on to something there. You got a little sweat going? No. There's no sweat? There's no... There's... Oh, no, there is a little bit. I'm going to keep I'm gonna keep talking. Okay, okay, I keep talking. I keep talking. Uh, I mean, I love Frenchie, so I, do you still know Frenchie? Keep in touch with this yeah, guy? Yeah, sort of. He's out mm -hmm. there, cowabunga status, mm -hmm. jumping off with some his cliffs. yurts and his kayaks. And yeah, I like the route that Frenchie went in. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go Isn't into that amazing. <laughs> <Wait>. <laughs> let's go to the art of Dan Blakesley. Mm -hmm. um, you're incredible. You're unique, super identifiable. Awesome. Your thing has it's stand out ish. When you see your work, you know that's Dan's right there. You're like, oh, is this can a Dan Blakesley? What is this? So you really got something going on. What do you call that style there? Mm. I mean, I, I don't really know what to call the style, but it's sort of, I like it when I do. So I, so I do a lot of pen and ink okay. art that I silk screen. Mm. So it's like, it, eventually it becomes like ink, colorful, like whatever. But then sometimes I do scratch board, which is sort of like, it's like a, uh, similar to etching, so basically you have there's a, a piece of white paper, yeah, and it's got a thin layer of white clay on it, and then it's got a India ink, black India ink on the top. So it's a black piece of paper, and then you scratch away to reveal white. So it's like backwards. And wow, so that's what's going on. Yeah, and it's wow. my favorite because you can't be as exact as you can with a pen. Right. It's like it's gonna look jagged. It's going to look rustic. It's going to look antique almost immediately. And, and that's sort of like, like some of my, some of my favorite um, 
work artwork comes from like late 1800s to like 1950s yeah like there's like a whole bunch of like between like poster artists and like great american like illustrators and things like that and one of my favorite illustrators rockwell kent rockwell uh, and kent. also and also norman rockwell it's kind of funny that both rockwell but rockwell kent norman illustrated rockwell. Rockwell moby kent. dick kent. in the 40s mm. i think 30s and uh he's profound a lot of a lot of black and white stuff but he also did colorful paintings but i guess i don't know really know really how to do i could describe my music better than i can describe my artistic style okay i i generally like to <laughs> draw mermaids yeah and jack-o-lanterns yes and um a lot of human type figures involved sure, also yeah yeah, um, yeah. So when did you first land like that style? You were like, this is my jam right here. It was, you know, it, it was through art school. Like yeah. I noticed, like I, I recently have gone through old drawings of mine in art school and old paintings and stuff, noticing how the style progressed and when it, when it became like my own signature yeah. thing. You know, it's like for a long time, I would say, say I was drawing you, right? I draw you with uh, one elbow, right? Yeah. And then I'm like, I could add another elbow. So I just draw someone like two elbows. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. That's my way of doing it. Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? Yep. So um two elbows on one arm. I, I understand. Yeah, okay. Oh yeah, I'm with you totally. <laughs> so you've been com- pretty much committed to this style. This is what everyone knows yeah. about you. And if there's other things you're doing, I I don't know they exist. So right. um this is 20, 20 years of this particular way? Mm, like Mr. Two, like so 28, head. something like that. 28. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, because the um, thing is, like, I think I developed my style from, so I can hear the candy cane yeah. in the mic. Nah. Anyway, I developed the style through <laughs> doing my show posters. Yes. Because, like, I, I didn't get to tell you that after art school, I was like, I'm not doing any art, not for a while. I need to take a break. So I started playing shows primarily yeah. and working at a lobster restaurant. Barnacle Billies. And then, but I was forced to draw because I had to make my own show posters. Yes. So then Kept I started the drawing show going. posters and I was playing a lot at the Portsmouth Brewery in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. And the gal um, that ran the place, her and, um, my my friend Joanne and Peter, they run the place. Yeah. She noticed my art and she goes, Would you ever want to do a beer label? I'm like, And Yeah, let's do this. I think I'm okay with drawing again. Like yeah. someone else's stuff, you know? But for years I think my style developed into my own because I was able to like I didn't do any work for anyone. I was right. like, I can do what I want. I'm a free person to like yeah. do whatever. No manipulation, no commissions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're just drawing away. Mm-hmm. So you eventually go on to accomplish a lot of noteworthy things with your art. Um, I'll name a couple of them, and I'll let you continue to tout and boast on what you've done. But mm. I know things that people are excited about is that the can art for the legendary beer in the world of hippies and craft beer lovers and connoisseurs, the Heady Topper right. has your art on it. Yeah. How, so wh- how does this happen? How does that happen, <laughs> Dan? Come on, I Dan. mean, that, that was like a... Was the beer that... How does, just give me it. Give me it. Give it to me. Yeah, so it was, it was kind of crazy. I was in Burlington, Vermont, All right. sitting at a cafe drawing one of my show posters. Sitting in Muddy Waters Cafe. I'm sitting there. There's a guy sitting sitting uh, next to me. And he was like, ha- I was there for like four or five hours drawing this poster. He was hanging up for three hours, kept glancing over, glancing over. And then eventually he said, hey, would you ever want to do a beer label? I'm like, yeah, that sounds great. But he asked me first to do a little coaster because they, they didn't have any beer out yet. Okay. Or they, or they were making such small batch, they didn't can anything yet. Yeah. So I did this coaster. And then he eventually asked me to do a bunch of different beer labels, but the one that like 
He said, I remember driving through, because I was playing Burlington a lot, coming from Portsmouth, New Hampshire. So I was driving through Waterbury, which is where they had the old place. Yeah. And uh, I was driving through like twice, three times a month, and i come visit them, come and say hi, hang out their their spot. And he said, I remember coming in late one night. He goes, man, I did it. I, 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 I feel like we have something really special. I cannot wait. We're doing this one called Hetty Topper. Yeah. Don't know what. Don't know if people are going to react the same way that that you know him and the people at brewery are re- reacting. But then all of a sudden, like <laughs> like a year later, someone's like, "That's rated top number one beer in America." I'm like, what? Oh, I didn't even know because I don't drink. So I'm not in the beer <laughs> world, so I don't even know what's happening with this thing. And all oh of a sudden, it's gaining like popularity. And it's like I have no clue. Yeah, mm-hmm. huge. It's like crazy. that artwork is just on random pint glasses that I see in houses all over the place. Mm-hmm. It's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Great work with that. And, that, and there was you. other hands that I've seen out there that have been in some sort of circulation that have your artwork on them, mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. What are those? There was one um, pleasant surprise, and that's in uh, western Massachusetts, and it's got a guy hiking along grabbing beer from a beer tree. You know what I mean? Yeah. Wouldn't that be great, eh? Even has a hey. ta- even has a tap on the side. <laughs> so <laughs> other accomplishments here outside of the beer label thing, which I personally think is incredible. Um, the Hearts for Boston piece. Yeah. Is that the correct title, Dan? Yep. Yep. So yep. That piece. That you want, will you give this story here? I'll tell. Yeah, I'll tell. that so it, transitioned so wonderfully. Yeah. Right, yeah, it was it was so crazy how this one came out. Basically, um, this was I, I this was the the piece of art Michael's talking about is a reaction, a reactionary piece that I drew after the Boston uh, Marathon bombings. Like, yes, I had a friend visiting from New York City, and we were gonna. I was showing around Boston that that the day before and the day of, and I'm like, hey, it's the marathon. Let's go to the finish line. And we're making, I'm getting chills thinking about it. It's so crazy. So her and I were going to the finish line, but she realized she had to catch her train. So we couldn't get there. So by the time I got back to Somerville, I heard the explosion miles and miles away. I heard this gigantic explosion. I'm like, what the hell is that? I'm not a type of guy that watches the news, but I put on the news right away. And they said, said about the bombing. And, and I was so freaked out. You know what I mean? Like just, just didn't know what to think. I, yeah. I was like so mad at everyone. Everyone. You know what I mean? Like, and, and I was like, I can't be at home right now. Like, I had a bunch of roommates, super nice people. Couldn't be at home. I needed to like walk. I just needed to walk, get out, walk the alleys, walk nature. Yeah. So I walked for 15 miles. Like, just kept walking. Like, I, I felt like I was kind of losing it, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and it was starting to rain. I was walking in the alleys and then I had to, in order to walk back to my apartment, I had to walk back on the main drag going through uh, Cambridge. I started walking back, and this girl, out of nowhere, she's like like hanging on the sidewalk or wherever. She points at me. She goes, you need a hug. She gave me this big hug, and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> Needed that so bad. And, like, on the way home, I was like, you know, tears down my eyes. Still couldn't, like, control my feelings inside. Yeah. I got inside. I was thinking all that walking would have like helped ease Calm the down, anxiety, yeah. you know, but it didn't. And I was like, so I sketched out this thing, um, and I immediately went home and just drew it. And then four, like three or four in the morning, I just posted it online saying, Boston, I love you. And woke up the next morning to it being shared thousands and thousands and thousands of times all over. I was like, what? What the hell like, like it was like i could not believe it. and all of a sudden the next day everyone's like hey can we use this on a t-shirt to help support the one fund and this now i'm like yes can we make silk screens to do this i'm like yes let me silk screen it like so i spent two weeks working with this art to get it out to as many places to to sell to help the one fund yeah. in, in boston you know and uh and it was like Oh Shirts man! And patches and posters, yeah. and reprints, and it was just, it was just so crazy. And I'm, I'm so it was, it was like, kind of like, 
nothing like that has ever happened to me before. It's like I, I've, you know, I've like anytime like something like a world crisis goes on or something with a close musician friend of mine, their gear gets stolen or whatever. I'm yeah. like, let's make a T-shirt. Let's try and support yeah. them or whatever. And it's like, you know, raise you know, 800 bucks here, 500 there. But it was like 20 grand yeah. or whatever that was raised from this tiny piece of art that was this big. Yeah. And I was, I'm still so blown away that that, that that happened. And it was on stage at like the Fleetwood Mac show or something <laughs> right. like this. What it was, happened it there? How so does that? Weird. It's so Explain weird. that to me. I'm like, I got what's happening now? a message from their booking agent, their manager. They said, Hey, you know, we, we, we want Fleetwood Mac wants to use your image as they play Boston and all the, as the backdrop. And I'm like, what? Yes. Oh my God, that's amazing. Yeah, that's They dope. said because they were looking online to find just the right image to project in the back, and they go, that's the one. I was like, oh my God. And I, you know what's so funny? Me, the kind of person I am, I'm like, I'm not going to ask him for free tickets. I could have said, hey, <laughs> yeah. can I have a ticket? But sometimes you I'd can like be to, a rascal, You know, man. I should have. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't. And everyone's like, Dan and why Doctor. did you not ask for a ticket to that show? <laughs> And I was like, I don't want to be that guy. Um, what else do you feel that you've accomplished in the world of art? Things that make you proud, aside from your sweating head. Not so sweaty head. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, recently, so I recently moved to mm -hmm. Kennebunkport, Maine. I'm back in Maine now. That's where I'm back from in the originally. Bush, yeah. and, uh, and I ended up going through every portfolio I had looking at this gigantic body of work to find like a couple specific things. Right. And as I'm going through, I'm like, oh my God, there's like 700 show posters. There's right. like yeah. tons and tons of years of laborious love put onto paper and canvas. And it's like, wow. I'm just like still trying to, like I'm trying to do the thing. I'm trying to archive it for me because early on, I didn't have a computer. I didn't yeah. have a cell phone. I didn't have a scanner. So all this artwork that I made went out to the world. I don't have a copy of it. I would make a photocopy. It hurts. Oh, right. It does. So it anyway. Does. Yeah. Right, right, right. But one of the things actually. Yes. Back to Monster Mash. Monster. <laughs> okay, so anyway, doctor. Bobby Boris Pickett <laughs> wrote the Monster Mash. Yes is a sweetheart and i can tell you that because i had a conversation with him on the phone i when i first came out on my first halloween album i'm like i'm reaching out to my heroes i don't care maybe he has his email online i was thinking you're out of your mind you're high it won't be there sure enough there's an email and i'm like i'm gonna write to bobby boris pickett who wrote the monster what's Mash, up bobby one of my favorite songs since i was a kid i wrote to him and I got a response like the next day. And I said, hey, can I send you my album? He goes, you know, how about this? Do you, is, it, is it okay for kids? I'm like, yeah. He goes, send it to my granddaughter. I'm like, sure. So I sent it to his granddaughter. And a month later, I get a handwritten note from Bobby Boris Pickett. And he says, hey, will you draw the cover of my book? I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? Yes, without question. Look at that. So then he said, give me a call. And I'm like, I'm calling Monster <laughs> Bobby Boris Pickett from Monster Match. I think I, I was like one of those wind up teeth chattering yeah. when I was talking to him. And he was the most kind, beautiful, gentle person. <laughs> and, and it's so funny. <laughs> I didn't know what to expect, you know? So I'm talking with him and he goes, he said, can you make some sketches? You know, he said, I don't want the sketches to be scary. I want it to be like all ages, like whatever. I'm like, awesome. He goes, you know, like, like, you know, Frankenstein werewolf, like Dracula, like whatever. I'm like, okay. So I started doing these sketches and I sent them to him and he goes, man, these are great. Now I'm going to share them with the publisher. But he said, one thing I forget to tell you is that this publisher has never used a piece of art on any of the, anything they've ever published. It's only photographs of the artists that they, you know, uh, whoever yeah, the book yeah, is about. Yeah. Well, they never ended up on anything. But I have these sketches, wow. drawings uh, that say Bobby Boris Pickett, like whatever. Just as good. <laughs> Almost. That's, that's a wonderful story there. Yeah. Dan. 
I can't believe it. It's a it's a smash. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so how do you maintain focus? Drive. How do you keep it rolling? Here? Because you you're know, like me? doing posters over here, staying up all night, dressing up like Halloween guy, playing fifty shows over here. Like, how do you? Here we go. Oh my god. I mean, it's like I'll be honest. Like my last year was even though we're still in this pandemic it was one of the hardest working years i've ever had because i knew i needed money to move yeah i knew i wanted to accomplish so many things and i i made promises to too many people yeah with art and so i didn't take a day off between august 12th and january 2nd except uh. thanksgiving and uh christmas and that was like insane because i'm doing both if i was doing just music or just okay. art i feel like i'd be busy but i wouldn't be going insane crazy and so what i'm trying to do is find a balance of being able to say no to people sometimes is a yeah. good thing and they you like say no to it like oh you know i want that i want that gig but you know i have, I have this piece of artwork I got to do and you know that gig i'm driving four hours up and back yeah. and like is that time i could be finishing this thing and then go on a tour you know what i mean so mm -hmm. I, so it's like a balance mm -hmm. between trying to figure so out so you just mentioned insanity crazy do you think that there's actual moments of flirtation with i think i might be losing my mind here <laughs> yeah i, I Pretty am good. look at these eyes slipping away from what is normal it, well, in a in a way, no, 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 like no, no, like no. not 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 really, like mentally, but but in the way of just like spinning my wheel so much yeah. that it's like from the a fun like kind like of crazy. a lot of yeah. a lot of times like on a lot of days, I wake up in the morning and I'm working 17 hours and then I go yeah. to bed. Like there's no and there's like a little break no, here and stop. there, in Stand between. Up to use the but it's uh, like, John. Right, right. That's a little break right there. There it is. That's a nice day. If you if you can hold it, that's a three minute break. You hold it, you have a three and just like be slow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but then again, you know, every once in a while when I do take a day off, it's like, my I I feel like someone's giving me a head massage. Like you know how all right, say if someone's taking a dandelion, picture it. Picture. To your head right now, they're barely touching it against your head, forehead. That's how I feel. So I'm trying to take more days off. And it's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to happen. I'm gonna, the thing is, yes. when, and what do I do on a day off, Mike? Go. Work. Nope. What? I like go to a museum. I get inspired. Oh. Which means I end up drawing anyway. For, for myself or i go see music mm. i get inspired i go home i start you know playing guitar or something here's a ticket with this ticket dan you can change anything in this world but you have to make this decision now in three seconds two seconds no war one there it is he's got it mm-hmm yeah can we give that an AKA peace? Wait, what? Like also known as peace, no war? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so without this wishful ticket that would bring us a peaceful world, yes. do you think that world peace is actually attainable? Is it something we can accomplish? I think it is People get absolutely into this? attainable. You, you think so? I do. You do. I'm an optimist. You Are know you an it's going to happen. I am. What yeah. do you think? I think everything can happen and it will. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is, like, I mean, I've had times. I've had times where it's like you go into a room, you don't know anyone, but there's like a dark, a dark vibe, or there's a light vibe, mm. or whatever. It's like, why couldn't there be like a in between, just like a, a common meeting place for everyone, for everyone? You know what I mean? You bring it's a like very bright and calming light at the same time right right you know what it's like all right so you're into i was peace, playing I you're was, into I was, peace i'm very into peace this is on your list of things that would be nice if they happened. yeah okay yeah 
I'm not even going for Miss America. <laughs> you know what I mean? They yeah. always ask for world peace. So why can't we do it? So they're, they're going out to millions beautiful. and millions of people. So why aren't people hearing this? You know? I'm not sure. I don't think it's that hip. Like, happiness isn't really in style, Dan. Why do you That's think that insane. is? Why do you think that is? What? Are they, what? That's so weird. It's not. It is in style. Or being cool. Hey, let's be cool for a minute. Into the, into let's the, be realistic. What? Oh, mm, I don't know what that means. Oh. Good job. I'm done. <laughs> cool. I'm just me all the time. Yeah. And you're you all the you, time. And That's you are the I most beautiful you. you can ever be when you are being yourself. You. Nice. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. No more beauty. No more appeal. Unless you're truly being you. We want you. We've seen other things. Right. We don't need an act. We want you. That's what, Dr. Gasp that's what is an people act. want. Well, that's different. But it's for still that's me, a though. It's a stage show. It is and a it stage is you. show. Yeah. Yep. You don't come down off the stage pretending your head doesn't sweat when you eat candy canes. I can't believe it. Maybe it's the brand. Are these Bob's candy canes? I don't know whose candy canes they are. Bob's are the best. It's definitely going to be Those like are the, the ones hippie, that... organic, whatever situation. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> No sweat. I'm uh, like, I swear to God. All right. Anyway. No sweat. No sweat. Um, we briefly discussed this prior to the cameras turning on. Do you still feel like a child? You have this exuberance? Hell yes. Yeah. I feel like it all the time. But what does growing up mean? Does it... I mean, all right. What is growing up? Here, here's the difference. All right. Say, say it was me in high school. I was thinking, like, I'm going to do this next week. I'm just going to put 20 bucks in my pocket. No phone, one key, and I'm just going to go out into the world. Boom. That's what I used to do in high school all the time. 20 bucks in the pocket. You have enough for food, key, and my bicycle. And it's like, that's like my favorite thing. And it's like, you know, as you become an adult, you end up getting a lot more keys. Like you see? this. I keys love exam visual, many, many examples. Uh, uh, different responsibilities and things mm. and whatever. But it's like, being able to shed some of that stuff and still have, uh, I don't know, like still be an adult, but still have an open mind. Yes. In a, in, in sort of like a, uh, and like a, un, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Just so you, like. So you don't know everything. Yes, I do, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> you know what this feeling is when you make eye contact with someone yep so what let's have a staring contest until the someone blinks but still talk to me i don't know about the blinking thing is that, that has to be a part of it no 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 you're not supposed to blink I just oh you just did that. it i can't do that that's insane anyway, that is insane yeah i'm sorry but beautiful eyes nice, yeah nice work with those you too man i know you put a lot of effort into that caring yeah. for them um, <laughs> <laughs> so what's the next thing coming from Dan Blakesley? What should I be looking out for? What should the people be looking out for? What are we, what are we seeing coming from Dan? What's hot? What's in the right. oven? What's, what's hot? cooking? I'll tell you what's hot. Yeah, <laughs> do it. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> no. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I've been recording an album over the past uh, oh. couple of years that I'm recording Good. each Good. song in a special place that's been been a place that's been like a sacred place to me throughout my musical career yeah. and in life in general and basically one place i uh I'm, i've been based in new england pretty much my whole life and one of my favorite things to do is go to arnold arboretum in boston when the lilacs are in bloom and sit under this one in particular lilac tree for eight hours with my guitar something to write with a book and and uh, a picnic lunch and i hang out there all day and it's the most amazing thing it's good for my soul yeah and so i was like oh i'm gonna record a song there so i brought a battery power recorder and recorded a song there and uh, you could hear the birds flying in and swooping down and everything wow and then i recorded another song exactly i recorded another song where these two i found this secret park on the, on the halfway point from Portsmouth, New Hampshire to Burlington, Vermont, 
I used to have this car that would overheat after two hours. Yeah. So I was like, man, okay, I got to find somewhere to let it cool off for a little while. So I found this random park in uh, Bethel, Vermont. It's called yeah. Peavine Park. Peavine. And I used to sit there and hang out for like every time I took that trip. And so it's like I've been doing it for years now. Every single t- time I take that trip, I go to that one spot. And I hang out and I play my guitar. And so I recorded a song there. And then I recorded one uh, in uh, uh, on an island in Maine in uh, in a chapel on Monhegan Island, a place I've been going for years and years and years. And it's this quiet little little uh, village, and there's a little chapel. So each song has a different vibe to it. I love this. Yeah, I really do. Nice. Such a beautiful story with every song. The cool. Deep- seated rooted meeting that exists there it's so it's so real and yeah. right and genuine cool and this story is all going to be somehow when the listener gets to the point of however they download or get handed the album it's going to the story is going to be included there oh yeah, yeah. so they'll understand yep. i'm going to tell people where i recorded it and why i record it in the specific location and some is it going to be called like different are... spaces no, from my road, life, it's so called Road the, Hymns. Road Hymns. Yeah. And I wrote, like, one of the songs uh, I wrote about, like, Ooh, it was, so it was yeah. early on in the pandemic and before the vaccination and, like, all this stuff. And everyone's, like, just hanging out for, yeah. like, months. And I'm I'm going through all the stuff in my basement. Just like, hey, I haven't seen this stuff in a while. Look at so that, I started going you? through and I found this old letter from an ex-girlfriend that I had 30 years ago. And I read it, and it was the most beautiful, beautiful thing. This girl's from Canada, and it was, uh, and uh, so I immediately started writing a song. And then what I did was, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna write a letter to her. Look at in you. In French, at that same address, I get that letter from. Who knows if her parents are still there, if she's still there? But so I re- and I and I recorded the song in a Gunkwit, Maine, where uh, where we met. So, so that I recorded that one along the along the walkway. Uh, Did you near get a Perkins response? Cove. Yeah, can't can't leave this hanging. Perkins what do you mean? Cove is beautiful. No, I still haven't sent it. Oh, it got lost in the move, but I just found it. Okay. So we're gonna see. I love this. <laughs> so when is this album gonna come out? Dan. Um, this yeah, I'm 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 aiming j- late June, early July, of 2022. Correct. Fantastic. Correct. Road hymns. Dan Mm -hmm. Blakesley. Um, So, one more of these kind of uh, off the mark questions here. Do you? I value your opinion. Yeah. You know this. Think there's any purpose to this life beyond stringing together moments of which we feel good? Is there any point? Yeah. What's the point? Wait, wait. I'm trying. Wait. Say it again. Purpose. Of life, is there a point to your existence? I think. I mean, my existence like I, I, I think, existence. I think about this all the time. It's like always working, always doing something, connecting, trying to connect, like doing, you know, just doing stuff all the time. And then you have times where you're just like hanging out, existing, and you're not thinking about a damn thing other than existing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Say you go to a festival. Yeah, you're catching the music, but there's moments where oh, everyone's yeah. swimming in the river together, whether oh. they're nude or clothed. Hey. And it's a different experience. And the thing is, like, that's when I don't think about What's going anything. On you know what I mean? It's like, and luckily, to fill your life with things like that, that's the way to go. Like, thinking about, like, like for me, it used to be early on in my musical career, I'd be like, I'll take every gig, every gig, yeah. any gig, any gig. Bring it on. Six, six, seven nights a week, like playing yes, shows, yes, sometimes yes, twice yes, a day. Yes. Yeah. And then I was like, I'm losing my mind. I'd rather I like this. try, I'd rather play places I want to play that bring me, like, number one, it's got to do something for my soul. Yeah. Soul got matters. to. Yeah. Always. Am I supposed to be looking at that camera? Are we anything? staring again? It's supposed to be existing, which you're doing great. quite beautifully. So <laughs> I would like you to know there's two reasons. Two reasons that I asked you to 
step into this space today I love this to space. be on the Offering Something show. There's two real reasons here, okay? First, I, I blinked first. Keep going. Oh, yeah. First reason is you had two visions, ideally. One, to be an artist. Two, to be a musician. And you, day in and day out for days, months, years, decades, pursued these two avenues, your passion, this idea that you could turn playing guitar into an actual life or your doodles could become something far more than that and beautiful. Right. And you took this idea and you made it real instead of dismissing it and trying to be the manager at Barnacle Billies and taking court's right, job. Right, right, right. You followed your dreams and made it a reality. That's inspirational. A lot of people, Man. they lack whatever it is, the confidence, the actual, they might have the confidence, they don't know what to do. You had the passions okay. and you pursued them. That's beautiful, reason one. Thank you. Okay? Feel good about that. Yeah. That in itself, you might not consider this. People that know you walk around you, they go, well, he really did something incredible. He's just kind of living his own life amidst this, right? whatever's going on. It's beautiful. Thank you. You did that. You did that. Yeah. Dude. Okay. Um, and the second reason, equally as valuable, valuable in a different way, is that as you have taken on these these career choices, the path that you're following in this independent Dan Blakesley running around out there, bringing joy to situations. Like people often say, he's so nice. What a good guy. You're in my phone from the first time I met you as Dan Blakesley is wonderful. The first time <laughs> I met you, that's what I saved you as. Your bald just, cats are on my phone. Yeah. So no, that's your name. Like when I go to when call you, you when you call Dan me, Blakesley's your bald one, cats uh, come up. Thank you. So as you've continued throughout all of this, you're a joy. You're a positive force. You could take on any attitude you would like. You could be miserable and a hermit, a little curmudgeon. Right. And just do your crafts, not deal with anything. But instead, it's like running around being this ball of happiness. People recognize, a lot of people they, they love this about you. They love what you love your art. They love your music. But they love the energy that is what Dan Blakesley brings around. It's beautiful. Right. So man, that's uh, that's good to hear. Like I don't hear I don't hear stuff like this all the time. You know what I mean? You and express this to you. Right. You know, I'm comfortable right. doing this. Yeah. Here we are. You know, man yeah. to man compliments are a beautiful thing. They are a Letting, beautiful thing. So, you know, Thank you, don't, you don't want your life to go by wondering like. Am I, am I, am I uh, making am a I difference? Did anyone? Yeah. yeah. It's okay to tell people you love them and to tell them the oh, great I tell things people they're I doing. Love them all the time. So it's not after they pass away that we start going, oh, he was the nicest guy ever. Every time he came around, he really lit up the room. I'm here to tell right. you, here's your roses. Smell them, buddy. <laughs> um, so that's it. As two things. Again, you follow your passion. You make it a reality. Beautiful. Second thing, you're a positive force out there. Love you for nice. it. You're offering something. That is of benefit to this world. I thank you for it, Dan Blakesley. And nice. so do a whole lot of other people. Thank you. Okay. I feel the same thing about you. Anytime I've ever run into you, no matter what it is, what <laughs> time of day, whatever experience, it's always the same thing. From the from the moment I met you, this this like warming, welcoming, loving vibe. Always. Look, I, always. I know you. Like we met each yeah. other and I know you. Whatever yeah. that is called meet someone and the whole curve is gone you're like oh they're comfortable with eliminating the barriers and allowing us right. to actually be humans together immediately right which is and it was immediately yeah well you know that's there there was yeah there wasn't any like mm, let me i'm still trying to figure this guy out so it was like this damn was there. guy here i don't know <laughs> seems a little bit fishy how nice he is. i had fish last Pick night my hand funny um it's been a pleasure talking to you, Dan. Same here. Um, let's let's get two two things here. Have I forgotten anything? Anything you would like to mention here, Dan? Anything you need to get off your chest? Mm. 
put out there no, into the world. No, I don't think so. You seem very comfortable. Yeah, I feel peace. very content. Yeah. You go to sleep easily? You lay down? How long before you're sleeping? Um, well, since I work 17 hours, yeah, it's pretty... It's pretty... Two minutes. Uh, well, actually, but it's not, though, because then... Then sometimes I'll like read a book or I'll like, like I'll go on Instagram late and I see my friend playing this beautiful song. I'm like, oh my God, the moment they... I, I want to play some music right now. Oh, <laughs> it's okay. like, I tell myself, Dan Blakesley, go to go bed. Go to sleep, Danny boy. But you know what I do right before Again, bed? I want to dress up. A lot of a... the times, if I have one of those days where I just did so much stuff, I go. Power through to the next day. Sort of like I did it. Oh, okay. Triumphant. I did it. There you are, this victorious in all your glory. Crazy day. Yes. Is that the right sound? Yeah. Yeah. All right, Rock. How about your social media situations, your handles? How do people connect with you out there? Um, they Instagram is yes. Dan Blakesley Music. And Blakesley, B L A K E S L E E. Yes. Blakesley. Music. Blakesley. Dan Blakesley Music. Yes. Instagram. On Instagram. And then on Facebook, it's Dan Blakesley and the Calabash Club, which is my band. And uh, and then uh, yeah, I'm on Twitter, but I'm not on Twitter. Uh, yeah, I don't. Really. Yeah, yeah. Every time I tweet something, no response. I'm like, ah, oh, whatever. I'll just. Get back to Instagram. Yeah. Dan Blakesley Music. Definitely I'm not on, get I'm hit not with on it. Uh, TikTok. I know all you so people want TikTok, me on TikTok. You know. Yeah. Look at those moves, though. Butter smooth. <laughs> 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 all right. I, I mean, I've enjoyed myself. You feel comfortable? I feel comfortable. Yeah. I've had a blast. That's it. So I love you. Thanks for being here. I love here. you, too. Yeah, of course. Um. A whole lot of love, thanks, and appreciation to our sponsors at Riverwalk Brewing Company. Enjoy your life brand and the organic natural shop. Yeah, definitely. Click that subscribe button. It does something for me if you're on YouTube there. But really, most importantly, enjoy your life. Recognize, like I said a little bit earlier and I say all the time, you are the most beautiful that you can ever be when you are being yourself. We want you, player. <laughs> That's it. It's the end of the show. This is Offering Something. I'm Michael Bernier. That's Dan Blakesley. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, it's been a joy. I would expect nothing different. <laughs>